Hey there, friend. Thanks for listening to the Compared to Who podcast. I'm Heather Creekmore. Today, we are tackling another lie that we believe. And oh, this is a good one. This is one I believed for a long time. And this is one that sometimes I still have a hard time not believing. Are you ready to hear what it is? It's the lie that if I do everything right, and I'm using right in air quotes there, if I do all the things just right, my body will never change. Hmm, have you believed it too? Today we're going there. Welcome to Compare to Who, the podcast to help you make peace with your body so you can savor God's rest and feel his love. If you're tired of fighting body image the world's way, Compare to Who is the show for you. You've likely heard lots of talk about loving your body, but my goal is different. Striving to fall in love with stretch marks and cellulite is a little silly to me. Instead, I want to encourage you and remind you with the truth of scripture that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved no matter what your size or shape. Here, the pressure is off. If you're looking for real talk, biblical encouragement, and regular reminders that God loves you and you're not alone, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy today's show and hey, tell a friend about it. Hey, hey there, friend. Okay, today we're tackling the lie. If I do all the things, my body will not change. Now, I am of a certain age where the marketing I get on Instagram and Facebook is targeted at people my age, women my age, I should say, um, because they know things are a changing the closer I get to the big five zero. And all of the messages I see tend to have a common theme. You won't change if. Think this has to be part of the change? No, it doesn't. If. And so many of the messages we see, especially around aging, but even, you know, around pregnancy and post-pregnancy, there's the whole like bounce back thing after pregnancy. All of these messages are If you just do all the things that are prescribed in this plan, your body doesn't have to change. And I'm just going to throw up a big stop sign, okay? I just want you to picture me throwing up a big old red stop sign, like pause, wait, stop. Is this true? Do our bodies have to change Or do we have the power to stop them from changing? Friends, now just just pause with me a second. This is crazy town, okay? Our bodies are not made of plastic. You are not a red solo cup that came off of an assembly line that will remain a solid red plastic polymer for the rest of your life. No, your body is a living thing. And if you live in Texas in the summer, you watch the living things like grass and plants die when it's 100 degrees or more for 45 days in a row, right? We know that living things change. Your trees, they lose their leaves and then they get them back again. Your garden probably withers in the summer and then blooms in the spring. Maybe it dies in the winter and then blooms in the spring, right? Living things things change. And oh, guess what? Your body changed already many, many times, right? Because you don't look anything like you did when you were five years old. And you don't look anything like you did when you were 14 years old. And chances are you don't look a whole lot like you did when you were 22 years old. And if you're much older than that, you didn't look like you did when you were 30 or 40. It's always changing. And friends, that's the way we were created. That is real life. Now, I want you to just pause for a second 
and think about what happens to girls when they hit puberty, right? They change. Their hips get a little wider. They start developing. Their bodies don't look like they're the bodies of a little girl anymore because they're not. They are becoming a woman and their bodies change. How strange, how cruel, how just odd would it be to tell a 13, 14, 12, 11, precocious puberty is becoming a more popular, popular is not the right word, but a more common thing. How strange would it be to tell a little girl whose body is changing that she should do everything she can to keep the body of a little girl? That would be weird, right? Like you wouldn't do that. You know that her body needs to change so she can become a woman. Well, friends that are kind of around my age, headed towards the end of <laughs> end of our fertile years, shall we say, why is it weirder that we would change on the other end? It shouldn't be at all. Changing on both ends should be normal. The body of a 50-year-old woman should not look like the body of a 15-year-old woman, Right? Likewise, what about the changes we experience at pregnancy, right? Our bodies change to accommodate a baby, and then they change again after the baby's born or after the babies are born, and that is normal. Friends, we have to debunk this lie that our bodies wouldn't change if we were just eating all the right things at the right times and exercising in the right ways. It's just not true. It's not science. It's not Bible. It's just not true. We're going to talk about this more in just a second right after this message. Ladies, I was absolutely amazed when I found out that a research study showed that women spend an average of $900 a year dealing with P leaks. That's for doctor's appointments, pads, pills, and bladder props. So essentially, spending all of that just to deal with the issue and not actually to do anything to fix it. My friends Jen and Christina over at Tighten Your Tinkler are on a mission to help women know that there are non-invasive treatment options that you can do from your own home without doing Kegels, which let's be honest, it can be difficult to know if you're even doing those right. You don't have to take any clothes off and you don't have to put anything inside your body. It's just a normal workout and it's gentle for every fitness level. Jen and Christina are passionate about helping women restore their dignity and self-confidence because they personally understand not just the physical issues and embarrassment this can cause, but how this impacts your relationships and your ability to enjoy your life. I encourage you, head over to tightenyourtinkler.com, take their five-minute quiz there, and just see if this is a program that might be right for you. And if you feel like it is, Jen and Christina are offering my listeners a special $50 off their signature program. All you have to do is enter Heather in all caps at checkout and they will give you the $50 off as a thank you for being a listener of this show. Go check out tightenyourtinkler.com today. Hey, if you're dealing with these kind of issues, you don't have to deal with them forever. Go check out what they have to offer. It has worked for me and I believe it'll work for you too. So what do you do if you are stuck believing this lie? If you are stuck believing that maybe your body shouldn't have put on some extra weight 
as you got older, or maybe your body should still look like it did when you were 22 years old. I mean, these are lies that bombard us. I think if a lot of us are honest with ourselves, we'll say that we feel shame and condemnation. When we look at those old pictures, maybe your wedding picture, maybe a picture from college, and you think, I don't look like that anymore. I should look like that. What did I stop doing that I don't look like that anymore? And friend, I want to challenge you today. You didn't stop doing anything necessarily. Okay, maybe your habits are different. But friend, your body is going to change because that's what bodies do. They change. (laughs) Okay, it's not any big crazy thing. I think about scripture. And how like in the Proverbs, we read that like this, like young men, their glory is in their strength, but an older person, their glory is in their crown of grace. Like all through scripture, we read about aging. Aging is a magnificent thing. Now, I just wrote a book, a devotional on aging. It's coming out hopefully in the spring, I'll let you know for sure when I have a date, our daily bread is publishing it. We're working on edits now. It's a 30 day devotional on aging. I think you're going to love it really no matter what age you are. But all through my writing of this book, I've been studying aging and really pouring through what the Bible has to say about aging. And it's so fascinating because the Bible's messages about aging are so positive. They're so encouraging. They're so affirming of the reality that aging is a good thing. Aging is a blessing. Long life is a gift. And that stands in stark contrast to the messages of our culture, which are don't let them see you age. Please keep trying to look younger. Make sure no one thinks you're older than you are. Oh, you better cover all those signs of aging. Oh, don't don't let your life slip away by looking old. None of these things are healthy biblical messages around aging. And friends, yes, your body is going to change when you hit menopause. And yes, it's going to change again after you're completely done with menopause. I just I just want you to stop and think about people you know. Okay? Now, yes, bodies come in a variety of shapes and sizes. But generally, In general, the teenager's body does not look like the body of a 30-something, especially not a 30-something woman who has had children. And guess what? The body of a 30-something doesn't often look like the body of a woman in her 40s or 50s who's going through the change. Things shift. (laughs) Things move. Gravity happens, right? But then keep thinking beyond that. The body of a woman as she gets towards her late 60s into her 70s, it looks different than the body of a woman going through menopause. And then as we age, even beyond that, it continues to look different. And part of that is how you can kind of identify a woman's age, right? You can kind of, you know, yeah, okay, you can tell in our face and our skin, those kind of things. But that whole body size thing is so common that for the most part, you can look at a woman and just see her body and kind of guess what age range she's in. Now, again, Oh, we've got a variety of bodies, a variety of shapes. Some of you are naturally slim. Some of you have always naturally been in a larger body. And those things are okay. Not, none of those things are bad or wrong. But your body, no matter what size it is, is going to change. And that's okay. Because you're not made of plastic. But as I was writing this book... Actually, this is the other book I'm writing, the Body Image book. But as I was writing this book, I was thinking about how funny it is that the words we use around changing our bodies or manipulating the size of our bodies are very similar to words we use around plastic. So follow me here. Like plastic, we want to firm up. (laughs) We want to be rock hard. We strive to eliminate anything jiggly or squishable. We smooth and we tone so skin will look flawless. So skin will be smooth like that red solo cup. 
And if you think about those words, firm, hard, smooth, doesn't it sound like I'm describing plastic? It does, right? But friend, you are a living organism. And beyond that, you were not just made at a factory. You were created. You were designed. You were shaped. You were formed. These are individual words. These are words used in scripture to describe how you were made. And they're very personal, right? Think about like a potter shaping the clay, or forming something out of clay. God designed you, he shaped you, he formed you. You're not plastic. And when we get stuck in the lie that our bodies shouldn't change ever, I wonder if what we're really believing is that we should be kind of an assembly line model (laughs) model body. I think of Barbie, right? I don't think it's Barbie's fault that we have body image issues, okay? But think about a plastic doll. Is that in some weird way what our expectation is for our body? That we could attain that, that we could get closer to that, and that once we reach that, we would never change. Friend, it's not true. Your body's going to keep changing. Aging is real, I tell you what, the other day I was drying my hands in a gas station bathroom and they have that like blow dryer that like blows with so much force. I think it's supposed to get your hands dry in like five seconds. But I haven't used one of those in a long time and I'm looking at my hands and I was like, oh my word, I've never seen my skin like fly that high. Like your skin is not as taut as it used to be. It's looser. There's more signs of aging on it. But that's okay because you're not plastic. I'm not saying it's bad to use lotion and cellulite cream and firming cream and all those things. Sure, go for it. But friend, my encouragement to you today is don't obsess over the fact that your body is changing. You have so much more to offer this world than just your body. And in fact, we have enough women who are focused on trying to look younger. How about being a woman focused on trying to make old age look good? (laughs) How about being a woman who can show the world that she knows it's not her body that matters most, but who she's living for and what she's doing for him. And by him, I mean Jesus, how she's living for the king and how beautiful that is, no matter what her skin looks like or what her body body looks like as she ages and changes. I think of Mother Teresa. No one would have crowned her Miss America. And yet what a difference she made. Gladys Allward, I'll be talking about her more in the coming months. She's someone I've been studying recently, a missionary to China who unbound the women's feet there. She wasn't hot. I'll just be honest with you. (laughs) But what a difference she made in the lives of thousands and thousands of women and children in China. Friends, you have more to offer than trying to keep your body from changing. And it's time we stop believing marketers' messages. You can't do anything to stop the changes. Okay, maybe you can take the edge off them. But again, why obsess over these things that have no eternal value, right? It's vanity, not because it's like vain and you're thinking of yourself all the time. There might be some of that to it too, honestly. But it's vain because it doesn't last. Vanity is about something that is fleeting. Friend, you can try to keep your body as hot as possible through your 40s, but I promise you when you're 70, it's going to look different, Even if you stay in shape and eat all the things you think you need to eat, it's going to look different. So what are you investing in? What are you obsessing over? Are you working really hard to make sure your body never changes? Because you are fighting (laughs) real life, right? You're fighting science. You're fighting gravity. You're fighting what the Bible tells us to be true, friend, there are much, much better battles to win than that one. And frankly, can't win it. That's my encouragement for you today. I hope you'll be able to get more comfortable with this truth. The truth is your body changes. And the truth is that that's okay. Let me know.
know what you think. And hey, talk to a friend about it. Share this episode with a friend. Say, hey, what do you think about this? Have you ever thought about this in this way? Because we believe the marketers' messages like so much. They come at us so frequently. It's really hard not to just accept it as truth. Because if everyone is giving you a different way to keep your body from changing, it seems like maybe this is something that's possible. But friend, it's just not. Okay, I'm going to leave it there today. I thank you so much for listening. I hope something in today's episode has helped you stop comparing and even comparing yourself to the younger you, my friend. I see you. I know you. (laughs) Stop comparing and start living. Bye-bye. Oh, hey there, before you go, if something from today's show blessed you, may I ask a huge favor, leave a review on your favorite platform. Seeing your five-star reviews is a huge encouragement to me. Not sure how to do it? You can go to compare to who.me slash podcast, scroll to the bottom, and you'll find all the information. And while you're at compare to who.me, check out some of the more than 500 articles on there about body image, comparison, all the things you're thinking about. Plus, you can find out more about my books, or you can grab a time for a free 10 minute call to see if coaching is right for you. I'm so honored to be a part of your journey out of body image and comparison frustration. And I can't wait to hear how God is working to set you free. The Compare To Podcast is part of the Spark Media Network, now available on the Edify Podcast app. Grab the Edify app in your Google Play Store or on the Apple Podcast app. You will be so glad you did.